What's up, y'all? It's Eddie Johnson, the host of Yo Yo the Podcast. Um, so we're here again. This is episode 22. Um, this is, I, kind of, I feel myself kind of changing and, and kind of switching up uh, each episode that I do. And I think that's um, for great reason, just given the time that we're in. And uh, a lot of the things that I've been learning lately uh, in terms of the word of God, um, a lot of things that I haven't, I, really, this is my first time hearing it. And, um, you know, people like myself, a lot of people that I know were raised in the church. So sometimes it may seem, I, I'll say personally, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but personally, sometimes, I, you know, at least before I felt like I knew more than, you know, I, I knew a lot about the word of God, right? And, you know, when God really had me uh, to come out, let's, let's, you know, use that term, to come out from these old, um, you know, these old, old teachings and, and, and old uh, doctrines, um, it really showed me how little I knew uh, about his word and um, really how potent it truly is. You know, I always used to think, you know, like, you know, see, you, I, I would see pastors and different people, you know, just seem to that like they had such a, a zeal to them when it came to the word of God. And I would always be like, man, I want to I want to experience that. Like, I want to, you know, have that knowledge and, and really um, be able to speak well about the word of God, you know, speak boldly and, and have courage uh, when it comes to me speaking about it. And um once I really came to this understanding that I now have, you know, according to the word, I really have been able to experience that and really look back like, wow, Lord, you did all these things uh, to to save me, to save, you know, your people, to have a people set aside for you. And uh, it's really, it really is a beautiful thing, you know, uh, when you really think about it and sit down and, you know, it says in the book of Revelation how, uh, John ate the scroll and it was sweet in his mouth, but when it hit his stomach, it turned bitter. And so that's like when you come to this understanding of the truth of God's word, is it is sweet. It's a beautiful thing, and you you really are you really become grateful and thankful for it. But then once you that that understanding really settles in, and you notice how many people are lost. Uh, that's including those that are in the church, those that claim to be believers in Christ, those that you know are believers in Christ, how they really still don't have this knowledge. And then you're like, man, yo, you know, if we don't have this, we could really miss out on the kingdom of heaven. You know, um, that's all that goes back to the first coming. You know, when Jesus said, uh, you know, to, to the Pharisees and to the others that were following the Pharisees, you know, you didn't like you missed it. The son of man came, you know, and you missed it. You didn't see it. Basically, they didn't accept Jesus, that this was actually him, that he was the the one that was promised back in the Old Testament that the prophet spoke of. Uh, so, you know, just having that understanding, it does make it, uh, you know, kind of a bittersweet thing because many people are still lost in that sense that they don't know this. You know, a lot of um, a lot of churches don't speak on revelation and the meanings of it. You know, um, my wife actually she had a, she recorded a video a few weeks ago speaking about parables, uh, one in particular, the, the four soils. And, um, you know, I didn't really have that understanding of it either. And so, you know, being in a class and, and really learning about what parables are, because honestly speaking, um, in order to really fully understand God's word, you know, apart from morals, you know, moral teachings and everything, you know, how to live right, how to live according to God's word, how to live a life that's pleasing to him, you know, fleeing from sin and all these great things that, you know, God forbids us to do and God tells us how we have to live, we also need to know uh, prophecy and fulfillment. And then with that, you know, we need to know what parables mean, you know, because the New Testament is is, is full of parables, uh, mainly Revelation. Revelation, it says that it's, it's, a, it's a prophecy. I, I don't know if I, yeah, anyways. Um, 
the, the, so th this prophecy is full, is full of parables. And so in order to understand the book of Revelation, we need to know what parables mean so that once we go over, you know, once we go over the book of Revelation, we can understand it and be prepared and uh, come out, like I, like I mentioned before. And coming out, meaning in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, God tells his people to come out from Babylon. So you would think, well, what is Babylon? Is that the world system? Is that the world? Really, um, you know, we can go deeper into that, you know, in another at another time. But really, that is the church. Um, because they have, uh, also in Revelation, they have drank, drunk, drinking, drunken, <laughs> excuse my language, <laughs> but they have drank from the uh, cup of the wrath of her fornication, her being the prostitute. Um, and so meaning they've, you know, drank, you know, or, or uh, taken in these false teachings, you know, and false meanings unknowingly. You know, when, when a person is drunk, what's the first thing that they say when you tell them, yo, you're drunk, you need to chill? No, I'm not. I'm not drunk. You know, so you don't, we don't, we, it, it's hard for us to know that until someone points it out to us. And this is not, I don't want to sound like I'm coming from a place of me seeming like I'm better than someone else. This is coming from a place of knowing where I was, you know, I was drunk with this, uh, with this cup of wrath, you know, and, um, you know, I was, uh, uh, in Babylon getting these false teachings. And again, it says that all nations have taken part of that. You know, the Bible says that. So that means everybody that that's including the church. And that's why God tells us to come out and, um, come out from, you know, come out from Babylon to go to where he is, which would be Mount Zion. Again, this is all, this is all biblical. This is all in the Bible. So again, I always like to say, don't listen to me, go look it up for yourself. You know, be like the Bereans that heard someone say something in reference to the word, and they went back and examined it to see if it was actually true. So you can, you know, go and examine it yourself. Um, so, yeah, the God says to come out from her, you know, and come out being harvested, you know, harvested from this field. So in um, Matthew chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew chapter 13, um, so Jesus is telling a parable of the sower and, um, you know, the disciples asked, um, you know, why, why, why are you speaking to them in parables? And Jesus answered in chapter 13, verse 11, uh, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So Jesus gives us these parables to know the kingdom of heaven, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And um, to go a little bit further, um, this is, this is, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 to 40. It's a little, you know, lengthy, but it's definitely worth listening to. So it says, he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares or the weeds are the children of the wicked one, which would be Satan. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the worlds, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath, e who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so again, this field, this is Jesus's field, which would be the church. And so we need to come out of there because the enemy has placed, you know, his his agents of chaos into this field to give lies and false teaching. Because we understand that the devil only comes but to steal, kill and destroy. You know, so he already knows his fate. He knows that he will be in hell because hell was created for he and his angels. But since we're made in God's image, he wants to he wants for us to be damned to hell just like he is. So that's why, you know, he placed his people into the church to give false teachings and false doctrines and, and everything like that. 
And we can we can name drop here. You know, I like doing this name drop because the Bible says to expose them. So you got your people like Joel Holstein, you have T D Jakes, uh even these, you know, newer pastors, Mike Todd, Stephen Furtick, um, we go, you know, to the, uh, the the older guys, Benny Hinn, um, Kenneth Copeland, all these guys. There's a bunch of them out here. And maybe even some of your local pastors, maybe, you know, some of them know what they're doing or maybe they don't know what they're doing, but they're still giving false teachings that come from the enemy. So that's why we have to uh, really have God's spirit. We really have to have uh, the spirit of discernment to know um to know what word is which, you know, to know who who we are getting our word from. Is it from the Lord? Is it the word of truth? Or is it from the enemy? You know what I mean? So uh, it's just so important for us to, again, to understand parables. So if I didn't understand these parables, I wouldn't know what this was about, you know, and most people wouldn't know either. So that's why people are like, man, I just can't understand the Bible. Well, number one, we need to have the spirit, you know, we need to have God's spirit to help us interpret it. And then also we need to have understanding of the parables to know, because I know for myself, you know, I have, um, I have thought about the, the book of Revelation and just the word revelation, um, I would, you know, kind of be afraid and, and not want to open the book. But really, we, we need to know this because this is really about salvation right here in, in the Revelation. This is our salvation, you know, to be taken out of the world and to, and, you know, and, and the world system and these churches that now belong to Satan because, again, he's placed his people in, and they're in charge and in here giving these false teachings, you know, so we need to get out of there and go to where God is, you know, go to where Jesus is, which is Mount Zion, you know, so, and again, you know, I just want to, I, I actually wrote something on uh, Facebook, you know, after my my wife made the video and then I saw this post and it just brought to mind and I knew this is what the Lord wanted me to, to speak on. But I said, in order to truly understand the Bible, we need to have an understanding of the meaning of parables. The Bible is covered in parables, especially in the New Testament, kind of what I said earlier, and more specifically, the book of Revelation. And for our time, it is the most important prophecy to be made aware of and prepared for since we are indeed living in the time of Revelation. And I said, no need to be scared, just a time to be prepared and really a time to rejoice because we know the return of Jesus Christ is truly near. So we need to pray and ask God for true understanding of his word and receive the other comforter, which is the spirit of truth that Jesus promised to lead us into all truth of his word and be a part of the harvest of God's chosen people. So harvest is the main word. OK, a lot of times, you know, people will say the rapture and I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. I used to have that understanding or I thought I, this was the right understanding of it, you know, being the rapture. But really, truthfully speaking, we can't find the word rapture in, in, in the Bible, but we find this word harvest. And that is pertaining to the body of Christ. We need to come out from these false teachings and uh, go to where God is, where he's given this word of truth, where he's given us this open word. Right. And then also. Uh, this in in reference to this other uh, this uh, comforter or the spirit of truth in John fourteen verse fifteen to eighteen it says if ye love me keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you excuse me so jesus does promise to give us this comforter the spirit of truth and when we receive that and we and you know the lord leads us into all truth you know into his word and the truth of his word we find that comfort you know and that uh, assurance that no matter how crazy things are going on in this world um no matter you know how many and what these false pastors and false prophets are talking about. If we have this word of truth, there's nothing to be worried about. You know, we all good. Um, <laughs> my wife and I actually watched, um, this is, this happened in 2019. It was, um, about Kirk Franklin. You know, there's a lot of stuff you know going on about him now, but it's kind of, it's, it's funny that this came up, you know, during the time of everything going on with him, but, um, he had a concert and a bunch of people are going there, right? So you had this this one street pastor, street preacher, 
and he's really telling the people the truth, you know, and telling them like, yo, he doesn't care about your soul. He's just taking your money. He's not preaching the truth about anything. You know, his songs have nothing to do with the word of God, nothing to do with truth. It's really all about him and about his money, you know. So, you know, you guys need to, you know, come out of it because the Bible says, what fellowship does light have with darkness, you know? So, why and then is he was talking about how he was if Kirk Franklin is a regular at the BC Awards, <clears throat> and you would think having that platform, um, why not use that time to tell people there, the, the musicians there, and even the viewers, yo, you know, you need to repent, you know, because the Lord is coming back. Um, you know, all these things, this is the enemy working, you know, uh, all the, the music with the killing and murdering and all these things, this is all, uh, in, in defiance to the Lord God, you know, so, but Kirk Franklin doesn't do that, nor, nor does a lot of the other gospel, quote unquote, I put that in quotes, quote unquote gospel artists, because realistically, you know who, who they work for, they work for these big labels, you know, uh, their budgets, their, their paychecks come from these big labels that run the secular artists, you know, that, that manage the secular artists, so they can't, they can only do but so much, and again, the Bible says it, what fellowship does light have with darkness? You know, we're supposed to be separate. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. You know, we can't be lukewarm, you know, because again, Jesus says, if we are lukewarm, then he will spit us out of his mouth. We're, no, we're of no use, you know, so we have to have that potentness of uh, being um, God's chosen people and, and speaking his word of truth and doing what uh, he's called us to do. Um, so, you know, I just... Oh, uh, getting back to, to Kirk Franklin, you know, so, so he was speaking out against that. And, um, you know, a lot of people took offense to it. But and, and that all goes back. This is all in the Bible. You know, people don't want to listen to to the truth anymore. They just want to hear, you know, what they want to hear. They want to hear that that candy gospel, you know, that is no good for, you know, candy is not, has no nutrition in it. You know, we need to have some real uh, serious gospel. We need to have the truth, the word of the word, the word of God. We need to have that in order to be saved and set free. You know, uh, a lot of people nowadays, you know, the world has really taken the the meaning of love and twisted it all up. You know, um, love is telling people the truth, the hard truth, even when they don't want to hear that. I just spoke to one of the big homies today, and and uh, he, him and him and his man actually had a podcast. And they spoke about um, how people don't like to accept constructive criticism. It's just, oh, you hating on me or something like that. And it's true. You know, people don't want to hear the truth. They just want to be right. You know, shout out to the op. Um, they just, they just, they don't want to hear the truth. You know, uh, love and the world's definition of love is just being, you know, tolerant of people like you seeing people doing something dumb and doing something that can hurt them but not saying anything because you don't want to you know what everyone says you don't want to judge them and all that nonsense man if you're my friend if you're my people if you love me i want you to tell me the truth tell me what i'm doing wrong so that i can be better you know that's what it's all about you know um especially in the body of christ an open rebuke you know um what, what does the bible say i'm paraphrasing um, a, a, a wound from a friend is better than a, than than a kiss or something like that. Basically, you know, when a friend tells you something that may hurt your feelings, but it's true and he's doing it out of a place of love, that's so much better than someone just rubbing you and patting you on the back. Oh, it's okay. Everything is fine. You know, we don't need that. We don't, that's, that's nonsense, you know? Um, but yeah, man, I just, um, I kind of jumped around a little bit, but you know, I know that this was something that needed to be said. Um, you know, let's, let, it's time for us to really understand the word and and um, come out from these false teachings and uh, these false doctrines and false pastors and all these things, these false churches. You know, I've had to do that. It is a diff definitely a difficult task, but it's so necessary, man. Um, at the end of the day, this is our soul at stake. And we need to really buckle down. And, you know, if we want to partake in the kingdom of heaven, we need to really uh, be right and be ready. You know, um, I always say it ain't too late until it's too late. You know, so now is the time. Um, you know, God has given us this opportunity. Everything that's going on, 
we got to see, you know, God's hand in it all. It is. His, his hand is definitely in it. And this is a chance for us to really get our minds right, get our souls right, our salvation right, and um, really be separate and really be harvested, you know. Um, but, yeah, guys, I just I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I just hope this this was this was a blessing to you all. It definitely uh, blessed me. And um, I'm just grateful to be here. You know, I'm grateful that God has allowed for me to speak like this and speak truth without, you know, holding any punches, you know, because we need to hear this, man. You know, forget about people, you know, lying to you or, or not telling you the truth because they don't want to hurt your feelings. You know, the truth needs to be spoken. And realistically, when it comes to the word of God, if you get mad at someone for telling you the truth that is the word or, you know, telling you to repent, telling you that this lifestyle is not right and it's, it's contrary to the word of God, you're not mad at the person for telling you because we just the vessel. You're mad at God. That's something that you have to deal with him about, you know, and um, who are you to be upset with God? You know, he's giving you breath in your lungs, you know, to for you to be able to, you know, take this opportunity to repent, you know, so. It's, it's time to it's time for us to use our brains, you know, to use common sense and to just, you know, really examine ourselves, examine our hearts and really get back to the Lord. You know, repentance is key, especially in these days. We need to repent from all of our sins, all the lifestyles that we're living in. You know, it's a hard thing to do, but it's so necessary. And, you know, Jesus is forgiving. You know, that's the beautiful thing about it. He forgives and he wants us to come to him and, and repent, you know, so that he can uh, dust us off and clean us up and make us new creations. You know, we can be new creatures in him, you know. So, yeah, man, I just I thank you guys for listening and um, I hope this got, this bless you guys. So, again, Yo-Yo the Podcast, find me on yo yo the podcast.com. Um, I'm on all major streaming platforms. Also, shout out to the hosting site, Spreaker, Spreaker.com. You can find me on there, too. And, um, yeah, you know, shout, shout out to, to to you guys. And I appreciate you guys for listening. And um, I just hope this bless you. So, again, you're going to podcast. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.